Well, the topic today is what can we do today? And the reason I picked that is a lot of times people have kind of come up to me and said, what activities can I do um, with a loved one? How can I spend my time? And I think it's really very, very important that you basically um, try to find ways um, to have quality time together. And that to me is really, really important. It makes the day go faster, but it also gives some meaning to it. But the problem comes is, how can you find some quality time together? One of the things um, that I'm thinking of is you want to select and modify different activities that you do on a daily basis depending on an individual's interest. You want to find things that people like to do. And a lot of times what you can do is you can go by their past jobs, their past hobbies, what they talk about. But again, it's really important to kind of get really tap into what people's interests are. Next, looking at some physical limitations. As people age, sometimes, well, probably most of the time, um, things change. Eyesight, um, you'll have changes in your eyesight so you can't see as well. Maybe some hearing loss and a lot of mobility issues, okay, in terms of people um, don't have the flexibility. They don't have the stamina that they do. So you'll want to really take into account some of the physical limitations. And last, how I perceive it, is if there is any some cognitive changes, okay? What you want to do is you want to adapt some of the activities so that people are going to be able to do them and to enjoy them. And that changes, and when I say cognitive changes, I'm talking about things like in terms of the comprehension, being able to follow directions, learning new things. All those things would fall into that category. So when you're doing it, what you want to do is be flexible and creative, okay? Meaning that you want to take into account what a person can do, and you don't want to make it too hard, because what happens then? It's going to be too frustrating for a person. You don't want to make it too easy, because that could be pretty demeaning. So again, it's a balance of finding the right activities and being willing to change throughout the process. Now, um, there are going to be a lot of activities that I'm going to be included, but I want to say something before I forget. As you go out, they have really kind of gathered some books from our library about different activities. So if you do get a chance, please kind of just take a chance and just look at some of those materials, because they really are excellent. So, what am I thinking about? You want to choose activities that both a care partner and a person with memory changes is going to find enjoyable. Why do I say that? Because if you're not enjoying it, you're not going to do it. And if you just do it for a person, um, another person, and not for yourself, and you really hate the activity, are you going to do it? Are you going to, you're going to kind of try to find different excuses. So at least be neutral and find some activities that both you and a uh, person who does have some memory challenges can really find enjoyable. You want to ensure activities are voluntary. Nobody wants to be forced to do something. Do this, do that. Nobody wants that kind of orders. It was something that you really do want to make sure that it is voluntary on both parts. Let the care partner initiate the activity. Why am I saying that? Does anybody know or can guess? Well, because usually somebody who does have some memory changes is not going to initiate that activity. Okay? There is something what is called apathy. I don't really care. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. So a lot of times you will not have any activities unless you as a care partner initiate it. Keep activities relatively short. Why? Because if it's not going well, what can you do? Go to a different activity. Use even simple things as activities. Okay? Anything can be an activity. Anything, as we're going to learn later on. And if you don't learn anything else today, remember the activity itself is more important than the end result. So if somebody does not fold the towels very well, or if somebody colors outside the line, is that really important? No. What's important is you really want somebody to be engaged and involved. Now, these are what we're going to try to cover today. Um, some of them probably in more detail, some not. The games and mental workouts, 
arts and crafts, music, exercise, home activities, community activities, and reminiscing. So this is a, probably not everything, but this is something to a start. So let's start with games and some mental workouts. Um, I've listed some here. Um, some of them you might be familiar with and others not. Bingo, you could play bingo at home, or you can play it in terms of uh, out places that have bingo parlors. Crossword puzzles. Now one of the things with crossword puzzles, people here might be really very good at crossword puzzles. I am not so good at crossword puzzles. However, if you go to the internet, you can make your own crossword puzzles. And what you can do is you can really, in terms of personalize them, to yourself. So if you go, it's an educational, so you can look under crossword puzzles, and you can be able to make your own and fill it in. And that really becomes really, I think, very, very important. So not only does it give you something, a mental activity, but it also will kind of help someone in terms of with some memory. Discussion. Discussion and debate, talking among ourselves, is very, very important. And it really brings up a lot. However, when I say discussion, I do not mean having a cell phone right here and you're looking at your cell phone while you're talking with someone. I really mean you're looking at someone directly. You're really having that eye contact. That is really very important. Um, dominoes, okay, you can have dominoes in all uh, states and different sizes. Um, and this is a uh, thing that I came away with. Um, I don't know if I found it myself or I read about it, but it's called Famous Names. Anybody heard of it? Well, we're going to go find it. What it is, is a cognitive activity for memory and language. You choose a popular first name, and then you have to identify a famous last name and initiate conversation about the name. So we're going to start right here. I'm going to take the name William. Okay. When I say William, who's somebody famous whose name is William? Shatner. Okay. Tell me something about William Shatner. Captain of the Enterprise. Captain of the Enterprise. And what about the Enterprise? Okay. Do you know? Tell me something about that. It's from Star Trek. Star Trek. And then you can talk about TV shows. Was Star Trek one of your favorite TV shows? Yes. Or is or still is? Okay. William. What's another William? I know, putting you on the spot, but that's where you start kind of thinking. Anything that you can think of with William? I'm just thinking of my cousin. Okay, well, he's probably not famous. Is he not famous? No. Okay, we'll come back to you. A oh, William. William Tell. William Tell. Who's William Tell? You don't remember, but the name sticks to you. Okay, so we can go that. A oh, William. Prince William. Prince William. So tell me about who Prince William. He's from the royal family. He. He is from the royal family. And what do you know about him? Do you know how old he is? You don't know. But then you can kind of carry this on in terms of going into a looking it up. When I was thinking of William, I came up with a lot of different things, OK? But this is kind of interesting. And some of them I alluded to, so you can kind of have a conversation. One of them I took and looked at what was the origin of the name. And so then you can have a whole discussion about origins of the name. Um, looking at different versions of it. Um, you said William Shatner, which would, I was thinking of in terms of a Star Trek. But this is something that if anybody is interested in, let's say, like William Shakespeare. And then you could talk about what was the, his favorite, you know, in terms of the play. You know, was it Romeo and Juliet or anything else? So you can really add on to this. Um, looking at um, William McKinley, the 25th U.S. President, you can have a whole discussion on looking at all the presidents and even maybe coming up with some trivia. Um, did anyone know he was the first president to ride an automobile? I thought that was pretty interesting. And he rode the automobile when he got shocked and they tried to take him to the hospital, okay? But you can still do all of that. We're going to go back here. I got another one, John. So I'm going to put me, so you're on the spot. John, famous name. Without John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. What do you know about John F. Kennedy? He was the U.S. president. U.S. president. OK. And, and it got assassinated. So what you do is you can kind of pick it up. Do you know another John? Uh, John McCain. What about John McCain? Tell me something about him. Uh, he's a U.S. senator from Arizona, former Vietnam. And see, what you can do is you can continue discussion. I'll give one more John. 
Anything John? Yes, you. Uh, John Lennon. John Lennon. What about John Lennon? He was a Beatle. He was assassinated. <laughs> he was a Beatle, but he, yes, and, and then you could talk all about music and all about the Beatles, which, you know, can hold a whole different discussion. Um, so I think that's kind of, um, when we're looking at it, um, did everyone know that there was 21 popes who were named John? And it's rulers of many, many famous countries. So you can really have, this is a really good, I think, kind of stimulating exercise that can be very, very fun. Let's go back. So now we got um, other things. Hangman, okay, that we used to do as a kid, but that's really a good word thing. Jigsaw puzzles. Um, many times people like jigsaw puzzles, but they find it too hard because there are a thousand pieces. Well, I have learned from people that you can get on the internet jigsaw puzzles, okay, for 24 pieces, okay. But so you can really kind of have this that can be a very enjoyable activity, but if you, if you had asked someone to do the thousand pieces, it would be very, very frustrating. Yes? I just brought uh, three puzzles mm -hmm. that I gave to you. Okay. And they're available. I'm giving them we use them and they were really great and we're passing them on. One is two or twenty four piece and one is a hundred. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. So that where and where are you gonna have them, Jasmine? Are you gonna keep them in the library? Uh, no, she actually oh, wanted me to they're right there. She wanted me to see if anyone wanted them. So uh, in music therapy, that's what I'm gonna offer up. Okay. Very good, thank you. Okay, letter cancellation. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about letter cancellation. This is where what you can do is you can take it from any kind of paragraph, and this is unfortunately the wrong presentation because you have the answers. So please don't look to the next slide. But um, what you can do is you can take any kind of paragraph, make one up. But um, what you try to do is in a paragraph, any paragraph, what you do is you try to cross out a certain letter of the alphabet. So I want everybody to hear count how many T's that you think are in here. And I'll give you 20 seconds if I can go. Go ahead. Counting all the T's. All right. Yes, ma'am. A T. A T. Any other number? 24, 25, 18, 22, 25. 25. All right, guys. Now we can look at the answers. 26. <laughs> You're a cheap guy. Okay. Today, T is May 3rd. It is a fantastic time to travel to Texas to ride a horse at night and watch the sunset. Did you know that Texas is the second largest state in the U.S.? Okay, but you see that this is something really good for people's attention and what you can do is take any kind of paragraph as well and pick any letter. T was just kind of random. You could put an S, an A, whatever it is. So, let's go see if there's anything else that we've skipped here um, in terms of, we got that. Oh, sample slogans. Okay, has anybody ever done seen me do sample, sample slogans before? Yes, no? What sample slogans are is people identify with slogans used to advertise and they are challenging and you remember kinds of products with some of the slogans. I'm going to throw some out to see if you remember some of these. All right, so we're going to start out with this one. Um, good to the last drop. Maxwell House Coffee. Okay? How about it's the real thing? Coke. Okay? Um, what about this one? Uh, breakfast of Champions? Wheaties. All right. Um, eat Fresh. Subway. Subway, okay. How about, um, let me see, um, you're in good hands with? Allstate. Allstate. Hmm, okay. Um, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Yeah, so if anybody is interested in kind of trying to kind of stimulate in a very fun activity, what you can do is you can look up all these slogans. And it really is something that does, sticks with you when you think about it, right? Something different to do. Um, 
Sudoku. Um, how many of you, I like numbers. Anybody here do Sudoku? You do, oh, a lot of people. Okay, now, can I ask, do you do it usually with nine numbers? Right? You got nine, nine numbers down, nine numbers across in rows, nine numbers in a section. Well, there's also some Sudoku's that you can do to six numbers, which, you know, can really, in terms of if somebody is having difficulty with, with nine numbers, putting them in those kinds of boxes, six numbers can be easier. And they're still doing the same activity. Uh, verbal fluency. This is another um, kind of um, stimulating game that I like. And what it can be done is it can be done in many, many ways. So the first way is a cognitive stimulating word activity that can be fun. So some examples would include that you pick a, any kind of letter. So I want you to name all the words that you can that begin with the letter C. Okay? Go ahead. C. Ooh. Uh, okay. Cat. Cat. One. All you need to do is one. Crunch. Crunch. Cross. C. Category. Category. Cry. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Climb. Climb. All right. Okay, so there's lots of things, and that's kind of getting your mind working a lot. Um, I came up really quickly when I had a cat, cane, cast, car. So that can be anything, any kind of object. Now, the other way of playing the game is name words of a certain category. So name words that are small. We're going to start out with throws. Small. Ant. Okay. Um, so back here. Okay, go ahead. So, okay. Something small, something small. C. Okay. Flee. Okay, flee. Absolutely. Now, okay, we're leaving this for the back row, which is going to probably have even more harder. I want you, and I named a couple, but name words now that begin with a certain letter and a specific category. So I want you to name all the words that begin with M and our types of food or drink. We're going to start, Jasmine, go. Wait, what, what was it? You need to go, <laughs> words that begin with M okay. and our types of food or drink. Uh, milkshake. Marshmallow. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> Mayonnaise. Mustard. 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 All right. Well, did anybody? I came up with mint chocolate chip ice cream. That was the first thing I came up with. Mint chocolate. But do you see? So what you can do is, so you can play this game doing a lot of different things. So you can either have you go in terms of the letters, the categories, or combine them. Another way of doing it, um, which I used to do when I was kind of teaching a class, is that I would have two piles. And I have one have letters on one pile, and one have categories, and then somebody could pick both cards. And that, you know, and then you go around the table. So you can play this many, many ways, but it really is something that I think could be very enjoyable and fun to do. All right, so next, let's get to card games. Card games are, you know, pretty popular, and we have many, many card games going. There's Blackjack, Go Fish, Crazy Eights, Gin or Gin Rummy, Old Maid. Uno, and before going to the last two, does anybody have other card games that they play? Yeah. War? Yeah? What, pardon me? Pit. Pit? I don't know what that War is. is right. Okay, but it must be a good game. It must be a good game. All right. And so this is something card games can be fun. The um, memory card game is something where you can play, is you, you initially deal out three or four cards, you scan them, and then you turn the cards face down, and you try to call, recall number suits or both numbers and suits. So this is depending on where a person is and um, what they feel comfortable with. So if you think that somebody can remember both numbers and suits, that's great. What you want to do is start out with three and four cards. Why do you want to start out with that? Because you can always add cards on. If someone is having more difficulty, then you just add more cards. Um, and if they're having a little less you know, difficulty and really, um, then, you know, what you could do whatever you want with it. So, without looking, hopefully, at the net, at the page, so nobody look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you, everybody, look at some cards and we're going to see how well everybody's memory is. Okay, you got 10 seconds. Go ahead.
Okay. What cards do we have? Two nines. Okay. Do you remember the suits as well? There was what? Seven of spades, two of diamonds, ace of clubs, nine of hearts, nine of clubs, and five of hearts. So again, do it with three cards, four cards, six cards. Somebody out could do 10 cards, 12 cards, whatever it is. But this is another kind of card game. Yes, ma'am? Five of hearts is a G. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now look at that. That's really good. Thank you. Why would a card be like that? <laughs> good observation. Very good observation. And the ace is missing an eight. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. This is a poor deck, right, guys? <laughs> Um, arts and crafts. Um, arts and crafts, they can bring enjoyment, increase people's self-esteem, tap memory, creativity, and motor skills, and hand-eye coordination. Um, it's, it's something that people really, really enjoy to do. Um, and I think that just even having that creative side is very important. There are several types of activities that people can do. Um, you can attend any kind of art class or art appreciation class. And not that I'm going to plug for the center, but we have both. Is that correct? I was going to say we have art therapy actually this coming Monday at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can find classes at Michael's um, in terms of, let's see, Joanne Fabrics, a lot of different places, or Oli. Has ever, anybody ever heard of Osher Life Learning Experience? Okay, so they have some art. Don't they have some art classes at least? So again, this is something that can be really helpful. Visit any type of craft show. Um, draw, paint, knit, crochet, uh, build different things. And they also, which is very popular now, which is more difficult than you think, is all those adult coloring books. Has anybody done those adult coloring books? They're pretty hard, aren't they? As we're shaking. But again, it's kind of like different activities. Playing with Play-Doh, um, doing things with your touch and hand, uh, making a family history scrapbook. Has anybody ever done that? History, and there's also, I think that there's a, uh, uh, probably an organization, I think it's like, isn't it Shutterfly? Anybody ever heard of Shutterfly? Yeah. yeah. Where you can kind of send in your pictures and they can make your own book and do all those kinds of things. So again, that can be really helpful just in the process of doing it and later on in the process of kind of going through the book many times again and creating a collage. Um, music. Uh, music really stimulates people different memories, enhance verbal, like uh, your skills, and it really does bring joy. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share with you, because I just read it this morning and I thought it was so very, very cool, is a quote that said something like, music is the mediator um, of the life of senses and the life of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of cool? From Beethoven. Um, but I will tell you that one of the things that I really experienced with music is many years ago there was someone who was having trouble, difficulty with their language and their speech. They could not get out any words. And I asked them to sing the words. And believe it or not, they were able to you know, sing all the words, but they couldn't speak it. Because it's so, I think that it can be a really wonderful experience. I've seen people who have um, some very um, significant memory declines but they, you still tap to the music. They can smile on their face. Music can touch uh, people in many, many ways. Um, so I think it's really important. And how do you do that? Singing together, dancing together, playing an instrument, um, going to concerts, and especially outdoor concerts can be really helpful because you can leave, um, you know, and so you're not kind of confined. Um, listening to music on the radio, television, um, internet and putting some of your favorite um, of music on a uh, iPad, um, uh, creating your own CDs. Um, I'm sure people have done that. Don't don't you have your own kind of music? Do you have it someplace that you kind of create your own? And how does that make you feel? Doesn't it put you in a really much better state emotionally? You know, when you're just kind of feeling 
down. You just really need something. So I think that this can be something really um, kind of nice. Um, physical activity. You know, people keep talking about how the importance of physical activity is. And I think it is very, very important. And as I was looking at it, look how many different types of things that I came up with that I thought was, uh, you know, really something that it would include. It may improve somebody's overall health, may help uh, delay or prevent the, some diseases or disabilities. I will share an experience with you that um, many years ago, a dear friend of mine was a uh, runner, a distance runner, and he got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was in his late 30s. And the reason that he attributed that is because of all of his running and being in such good physical condition delayed the disease. And you, keep, you hear more and more things about it. It may speed recovery, may help um, improve sleep, and one of the things that they're finding is even missing two to three hours of sleep, getting less sleep, even by a few amount, can make a huge difference in terms of not only your emotional state, but in your cognitive state. Just a couple of hours difference. Um, it may improve mood and relieve stress. For both somebody who is being a caregiver, um, as well as someone who is not being a caregiver. Uh, and when you think about it, unfortunately some of the statistics is that a lot of times from the stress caregivers die first. So what you want to do is any type of stress um, that if exercise can help, it's something to really consider. It may increase your sense of well-being and accomplishment and uh, this is maybe associated especially with uh, aerobic exercise with improvements in memory, attention, and processing speed and a decrease in a rate of cognitive decline. And one of these studies that we are just going to be doing now um, is something that's looking at exercise as a intervention, a therapeutic in intervention, okay? Which would be wonderful for somebody, people who have some memory, uh, who at least have problems that they might have memory. They're cognitively what's called intact, but indeed that they have some risk factors. Um, so an exercise is something they're using as an intervention. Now, what about exercise? You first want to embrace it. You want to do things that you like to do. Um, and you want to try to do it with a partner. Do you know why you want to do it with a partner? Because you're more likely to do it. If you don't do it with somebody else, it's like, okay, I'll do it later. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I really am too tired now. So if you have something with a partner, it's, a, it's more inclined to do it. You always want to talk first with your doctor to make sure this is something that you can do. Start slowly and work up. And the types of exercise and physical activity would include some of the endurance things like walking and swimming and running, um, strength exercise with the resistance training, resistance training, weight training, and one easy thing that I've heard for strength is people just to kind of stand on your tiptoes, okay, because you're getting strength there. Uh, balance exercises, and how do you do a balance exercise? Okay, balance. When I'm talking about balance is you, probably, you basically want to stand on one foot, okay, then you might want to say, okay, I'm going to just use one hand, then I'm going to use one finger, Okay, now I don't know if I can do this, okay? Okay, and then you don't have any hands or fingers, all right? So that might be something to look at, and stretching. Um, so again, think about the different exercise kinds of mode. All right, now, home activities. All right, home activities. Participating in home activities can instill a sense of feeling useful and bring opportunities to talk, laugh, exercise, use both visual and motor skills, stay occupied, stir memories, and feel connected. You can do everything, right? And what you want to do is what would you consider a home activity? You want to look inside and outside your home at what you might have previously defined as a chore and now we are redefining it as a meaningful activity. And just even when you think about it, 
redefining it as something that is meaningful can make a difference. So I've listed a couple of things here. Well, a lot of things, okay? Um, does anybody have any other things that they can think of that would consider a home activity? That's not covered here. Yes? Planting flowers. Planting flowers, very good. That's a good one. Anything else? Mow the lawn. Mowing the lawn, absolutely. That's a great one. Any? What? Okay. <laughs> Well, that, I guess that's a home activity or a game. Okay, we could do that. But you can do that. You can look at their baking cookies together, and then you have the joy of eating the cookies. Um, Brillo, you have a question? Well, I was just going to say things like sorting laundry and, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. you know, for color coat, you know, and folding. I, I don't know. I just. No, no, no. No. Folding laundry, folding towels, you know, doing those kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, you know, washing fruits and vegetables, setting the table together, eating together, reading the newspaper. And again, I think what you want to do is just think of these as, you know, different activities that can be enjoyable. Sorting objects, people have sorted like buttons, they've sorted different kinds of colors. Um, but again, this is an activity that many times might need to be done, um, but instead of seeing it as a chore, it could be used as a home activity for people. Um, even petting a cat or dog. I mean, don't think about that. That's very, very relaxing. But it's also good for the animal, too, because they're getting the attention. Um, uh, what else do we see here? Sweeping, vacuuming, dusting, polishing the silver. Um, writing letters, and somebody, you know, if they really are having trouble writing an address, just putting the postage stamps on the envelopes. Cleaning the windows, shining shoes. Um, if anybody wants to come to my house, they can do some of these home activities as well. And licking the envelopes. Okay, licking the envelopes as well. Absolutely. Okay, that's, you know, and a lot of people don't like to do that, so here you have something to do that. What about outside activities? Sweeping the patio, washing um, outside windows, filling a bird bath um, and watching it, or, um, working in a garden, flying a kite, taking a walk. Um, having an impromptu picnic. So instead of inside, let's go outside and just have like a little picnic. Uh, and doing some sports. Or stay inside and just look out the window. And absolutely staying inside and looking out the window so you're getting the view. Um, next, looking at some community activities. Um, this can be something that can be very important because it helps people stay connected. But you have to be very, very careful because sometimes being in unfamiliar situations when there's too many people around, it can really be something that is not uh, necessarily beneficial. So when you're looking at a specific uh, outing, an activity, uh, please be looking into those kinds of things. One of the things when I think about it is I like to go to the Bellagio to look at the observatory. And I don't know if everybody else does too. But I end up going at a very odd time. I go Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Why do I go Sunday morning at 8 o'clock? Because then I can really see things and you're not rushed. If I waited till 11 o'clock, you know, there would be so many people scrambling around. And I'm thinking if somebody is really even feeling like overwhelmed by that, so you want to pick your times. You want to go out to, let's say, to a restaurant instead of lunch at 12 o'clock, <coughs> change it to 2 o'clock when it's less crowded. Find some kind of um, place where you really, everybody will feel comfortable. And I've listed a couple here. Um, I don't know if anybody has looked at these or even considered them. Um, appreciate just going for a nature walk. Um, anybody been to Spring Preserve? Okay, and it's kind of nice, right? Okay. Um, anybody be have been to Ethel M. the Cactus Gardens? Really nice and enjoyable. So you can do a lot of different things. Uh, watching fish at a fish tank. Um, we have a lot of places that we can do that. Um, including, um, I think it's a Silverton where they used to feed the fish, oh, yeah. right? Okay. So these can be outings. Going for a drive, enjoying the farmer's market, just even sitting on a park bench and just kind of enjoying nature. Um, going to an outdoor concert or play. Um, and this way, like I'm saying, if somebody really is not, you know, getting tired, then you can leave. And it's a lot easier to leave in an indoor, uh, in an outdoor concert than an indoor concert. 
Um, walking in the mall, people do that all the time. Um, just meeting with family and friends. Um, sports events. A lot of uh, people like to watch sports events, so even if you're not going to be watching some professional sports events, you can even go up and watch, let's say, a little league game that's in the neighborhood. Um, again, and that might remind you maybe when you played uh, baseball or if you played football or you played soccer. So all those things can be very enjoyable. Um, religious services and clubs. A lot of times um, in terms of many of the religious organizations, the churches and the temples will pick people up and either take them to um, men's club, um, sisterhood, even to some of the services. Or I know that a lot of times um, services might be online that people can watch. This is a way people are feeling connected to the community. Um, and visiting uh, like an ice cream parlor or a uh, restaurant. Everybody likes ice cream, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Next, um, this is um, reminiscing. Um, and this is kind of the last thing that we're going to do, but this you could be talking about for probably weeks on end. But it really is something that I think is that it's very stimulating, it's enjoyable, it decreases some people's boredom, it increases some socialization, um, and you kind of, it helps people really look at their accomplishments, because a lot of times um, in years you don't think about things that you really have done. You just might be think of things that you can't do anymore, and it's putting a different perspective of what you have done. Increases feelings of closeness, and it really can create a legacy and capture important memories for generations. So even if you don't think that you're interested in it, maybe um, your children are interested, or your grandchildren, or, or an aunt, or an uncle, or somebody is interested. So how do you do it? You want to talk about everything and anything. Um, you can have prepared questions, but don't just kind of settle to that. If the topic goes to someplace else, let it go to someplace else. You don't want to hurry. You want to kind of keep it, you know, really in terms of, you know, as enjoyable and let each of you talk. And it is something that's interactive, that people are talking with each other and bringing up different things. Um, it is not necessarily a test of memory or something specific occasions. And that's really important to remember because you might be coming out with, somebody might be telling you stories that you know this did not happen. Where is this coming from? Okay, we never lived there. We never did this. It doesn't matter if the idea is it's basically keep having conversation going. So, how do you do it? You use your senses. Auditorial, visual, olfactory, taste, and touch. So, hearing, you're listening to sight, you're listening to smell, nose, you know, listening into the nose, what did I forget? And then the touch part of it. And the more senses you use, the better it is. The more senses you use, the very better it is. Now, um, how do you do it then? You can do it through music, which we talked about before. Pictures, looking at lots of different pictures. Um, touch, touching different objects will really bring back different memories. And maps, has anybody ever used maps as something to do? Where you put a map on the wall and you can ask somebody um, where they were born or where they lived or where they vacationed or where um, other relatives are or where their children are living. It's a really good, um, thing to have and you can do so much with a map you know in terms of looking at it foods okay how many of you can associate something with a special food anybody yes what do you what 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 do you associate with a food and and what's it associated my mother's mother's pie your mother's pie okay all right and nobody made anything like that right okay and, and when you think about it, you think about your mom and all those good memories. Wonderful. Anybody else? A certain food that's associated with something? Cities. Pardon? Cities. Cities? So, Seattle. So, okay, so you think of different, yeah, so every, so, like so all the cities you visited, you kind of have a special place and special type of food that was really, that stuck in your mind and it helps remember the cities. Anything else? Anybody else? Yes? 
My mother tamales at Christmas. Your mother's tamales at Christmas. So not only is it like the food that you're talking yeah. about, then it brings up the whole holiday. That's what we have on Christmas. Back home. Okay. Sorry, your mother. And so that's where you kind of think about it. So foods can bring something that really they're very, very vivid. What about any movies and television? I have I don't know if you can see that, but you know what uh, movie that was from? Sounds of Music. Does anybody, did anybody see that more than once? Okay, and bring back memories, you know, of different things. So you can do that with a lot of different things. Um, and so it really triggers something. And fashion, uh, believe it or not, that is a poodle uh, skirt, which was something very, very popular. But each in terms of through generations, you really do have a lot of clothing and jewelry that can be really bring back different memories along the way, okay? Um, I know in terms of like with this necklace, okay, uh, my uh, parents gave it to me. And so whenever I think about it, I think of the really good times. It was I think when I was graduating college or something. So you, what you do is you kind of have this memory and it really sticks with you. Yes, ma'am. We actually have, we do have another program. Okay. And it's called Conversations to Remember. Uh huh. And the conversations are to both help you remember and to be memorable conversations. And we start by looking at different uh, art pieces, pictures, whatnot. And our docents will tell us a little about the art or the artist, but then they'll need conversations um, uh, as our life relates to those pictures. So like maybe it's a little girl holding a doll that looks like it was her favorite toy. Did you have a favorite toy? And then it helps people kind of remember or maybe tell about their history. And we, we call it Tell Your Story and it's called Conversations to Remember. Oh, very nice. And, and tell the time again? Um, so it's the fourth Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Okay, good. For just a little over an hour. Excellent, thank you. Um, common reminiscent topics can be really anything, but I've looked at in terms of childhood. When you think of childhood, you can think about childhood friends. Maybe you can think of the teachers that you, um, you know, really uh, grew up with. Uh, think of uh, different sports that you played in. And a lot of times what's really good because some of the childhood experiences are your long-term memory. And so that you really do feel good about reminiscing um, because you really are remembering a lot of different things. Um, adulthood, it could be things like your first job, your first home, some of your relationships, uh, places you lived, different vacations. Does anybody have a special vacation that they kind of can think about and when there it really puts them in a really good mood? Any special vacation anybody wants to share? Yes? The first time I went to Thailand and stood in front of all those beautiful buildings and I thought, hey, it's like, I'm here, it's Thailand. And it brought back the movie, the king and I, brought back everything. Okay. And I started to sing. Very, oh, very good. You want to sing now? No, no, no. <laughs> you don't want me to. Oh, okay. Any, anything else when you think about, you know, in terms of um, any of the different vacations? Anybody want to share? Yes? Uh, we had one, um, it was Easter weekend, went to the beach in North Carolina, and the house turned out to be all these pastel Easter colors in each room, and oh, wow. it was like the perfect beach vacation, and it all everything matched up to the occasion. Oh, wow. The family, it was nice. And an Easter egg hunt on the beach. My kids have never forgotten. Okay. And, and you have it too, and it's like in terms of when you're thinking about it, I mean, I was really able to kind of picture a house with some of the pastel colors. I mean, it, it's that vivid. Right. The beach house, the dunes, the blues, you know, right mm -hmm. on the beach. It was really mm -hmm. beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Um, different things that you can do in terms of favorite jobs. Does anybody have a favorite job? <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, looking at family, immediate and extended, or different holidays people have, that really does reminisce, like we, you know, in terms of, you know, when you were saying in terms of uh, Christmas, but a lot of holidays are associated with good things, friends, hobbies, and sports, and people don't necessarily think about sports, but sports can be a very good reminiscing topic to do. Um, 
Before kind of sharing, what I like to do when I do this is something that I really have found a website that really that you can kind of think about, and it I call it kind of reminiscing. It's called D Maria Time Capsule. And what it does is it can put this day in history, and you can go back to any date, and you can find out what happened there, who was, let's say, maybe the top songs, who was president, what was on TV. So what I did is I first went back 30 years. So the date is May 3rd, 1987. It turns out it is a Sunday. Does anybody want to kind of guess what some top songs or top performers would be in 1987? Yes. Really? Yes. Bon Jovi was uh, one of them. Very cool. And he just played at the gala, too. Um, it was Living on a Prayer. Other ones that I don't know if people um, are aware, um, I Knew You Were uh, Waiting by Aretha Franklin. Okay. Uh, with or Without You by U2. Um, I Want to Dance with Somebody by Whitney Houston. Mm hmm now, let me ask you guys, how much do you think gas was in 1987? Any guesses? Close, so close. Go up one. 96 cents. 96 cents. Um, and uh, a loaf of bread, any guess? 1987 loaf of bread was only 55 cents. But I can sometimes get a loaf of bread for you know, a dollar, so that's not bad. Um, TV shows in 1987, and I ha have to admit that I still watch some of these TV shows. Um, but um, does anybody, uh, Miami Vice, does that strike a bell? How about Married with Children? Did anybody watch Married with Children or Cheers? Cheers. Uh, Dallas, okay. Hill Street Blues. How about L.A. Law? And you said Star Trek, but it's Star Trek The Next Generation. It came out in 1987. Um, anybody around that new hot toys that came out in 1987? Uh, Pictionary, anybody ever play Pictionary? Um, some of these I don't even know what they are. Talking Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> um, they have Pogo Ball. Um, so you can kind of get a lot of things. Oh, and if anybody likes, uh, you know, some of the movies, the uh, best picture in 1987 was called The Last Emperor. And the best actor was in Wall Street. Did anybody ever see Wall Street, the movie? Okay, so who would be the best actor? Mike Douglas. Mike Douglas. That was close. And then um, in terms of the best actress was in Moonstruck. Cher. Cher. Okay. Now, if anybody is like my age, we're going to go back 50 years. Okay. On this day in history, which turns out May 3rd was a Wednesday. So this is 1967. So does anybody think of anybody who is here? So any of the top songs would be by anybody here of the Turtles? Okay, Happy Together. Uh, Windy by The Association. Uh, Light My Fire by The Doors. Okay, and um, let's go back and see how much gas was then in 1967. Any guesses? 50 cents. It's 30. 15, 15, 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. You want 33 cents a gallon. Wouldn't you like to go back there for just to get the gas? We can take a trip. Okay. But, but at the same time, when you think about it, um, a house, um, an average house was only $25,000. Okay. But the minimum wage was only $1.40. So you got the good and the bad. Um, let's see what else happened. Uh, this would be on uh, 50 years ago. Um, anybody ever hear of Katherine Hepburn? Yes. Of course. She was the best actress in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And on TV shows, and again, I have to say that I still watch some of these. Does anybody ever watch Hogan's Heroes? Yes. Okay, that came out then. Um, the Ed Sullivan Show, that was pretty popular. 
Oh, and this, this I have to say was one of my favorite. Mission Impossible, mm -hmm. okay? Star Trek, so not the, the original Star Trek came out there. Bewitched, um, Beverly Hillbillies. Anybody remember those, that show? Um, and oh, I Dream of Jeannie. Okay, so these were the kinds of things. And I will tell you the new hot toys in 67. And some of these I think are still around. Don't break the ice. Anybody ever heard? Yes. Did you guys hear of that? Yes. Oh, let's see, take like little these blocks. That came out then. Um, ants in the pants. Okay. Uh, the monkeys game. All right. See, so some of these are still really around. Um, I will, um, with that in mind, um, I do want to say books over there for activities. Alzheimer's Association has a site of 101 activities. And um, I hope everybody has had an enjoyable uh, 